Okay, so for today's video, I thought I'd cover something before posting my overlocker video. And that's this. Now these are machine needles from a knitting machine. These ones, as well as others that I have, are ones that are being thrown out at my current workplace. Why are they being thrown out? Well, simple. They malfunction, they break, at which point they just get thrown out. Now, the super, well, not less, I wouldn't say supervisor, more the coworker who I'm shadowing to learn this sort of stuff, uh, he pointed out something that I agree with. This is a factory environment. We don't have time to screw around. Now, saying that, when I mean screw around, yes, you could take these neat, uh, these hooks, you could play around with them for a little bit, get them working again, put them back in the machine. But then again, how long will it be before they start skipping hook, uh, skipping loops? You know, they skip one loop, it, it just gets irritating. I've seen one sometimes they're like this long and you gotta sit there and you've got to manually do it. And it, it gets really painful. And that's a real big waste of time. So financially, I think these things are like $4 each. I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, let's say someone has to sit there for two hours at normal wages. That's a shit ton of money. So to simply take one of these, that's, well, this one here, as you can clearly see, is kind of missing its tip. Oh wow, that's not focusing at all, is it? There we go. So this is a clear obvious one where it's seen better days. Uh, I'll put them side by side. Here we go. So this one has got a hook. This one doesn't. This one, the hook's been knocked off. At which point you, you got to replace that because it's not going to work. <laughs> the whole point of this Grabs a hold of the wool, pulls it down. Shing, up, down, up, down. It's a constant thing. And they can fail for multiple reasons. One reason is that behind where this latch is, it can build up with gunk and then it can be difficult to fix. And what I have done with some of these to get them to work again is to take this needle and to jam it up in there and then to work this up and down. And then I found later on, they're still not 100%. So putting it into a, say, knitting machine that's going to, you know, skip stitches now, it is going to look horrible. It's going to look horrific. I was going to say horrible, but I, I think horrific's a better term. What I have noticed is that what work will do, or what they did a long time ago, uh, take a couple of these hooks and then use them, make a little handle. I'm thinking, ooh, you know, that would be a fun little project to do. So got a couple that were, well, you know, bleh. And well, I've ended up with this sort of collection now. <laughs> and these two here. But what I found is that some of them don't work, even after sort of picking at them for a while, just to complete. Other issues can align by not just the top of this coming off, so this part of the hook here, the latch, this part that I'm moving with the needle, can also either become bent or it can completely snap off, like in the case of this one, where there's no latch, it's just gone. So it means the thread won't be secure, uh, sorry, the wool won't be secure, now another issue, which you can probably see here, is this bit of metal. How it's, ooh, that's not good. This bit of metal here is missing on this hook here. This bit of metal is important because it allow the machine when it's uh, putting its arm through, will push this up, whoop, push it up push it down. And that's the bit that it has to do with. And if it's not there, well, the hook's not going to move. At which point, where is it? This one's not a good example, but if that, that's missing and the hook's in an up position, shonk, 
at which point the whole machine is going to come to a grinding halt and you've got to pull this out and replace it. Hmm. I did think about, oh, you know, maybe I can get a bunch of these punt and when I look at it, it's like, yeah, I would need some serious micro tools to first punch the latch out, even if that's how it is. I mean, for all I know, it could just be two little bumps, but so this one isn't really any good for me, but it, it does show an example about that's how bad they can get. This shows an example about how bad it can get. Now, they may come out completely fine, but this one will not fully close. So up, now I can keep pushing and it, yeah, it closes, but when it's supposed to have very little pressure and it takes a lot to open that up, which means that's gonna cause uh, mixed uh, missed ho hooks, loops, sorry, mixed loops. How's this one? Yeah, this one's the same. It sort of uh, skips occasionally and sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. They're bad. Now, I did have someone recommend that I could just burn these and then put it back in. Although anyone who knows about metallurgy would know that that can weaken or make it more brittle. So I can see, yes, that might work. Uh, I'm afraid of applying too much heat and well, making it brittle. How's this one? <laughs> so this one's a perfect example of a stiff one. So this takes very little pressure to flick up and down. This one requires more. I mean, it feels like there's definitely something jammed in there, but... Hmm. So what to do with these? Well, making a handle out of a few, yes. Um, would I use these for knitting? No, I'd use these for overlocking, which I showed in the video. Now, if you think, oh, you know, these are going to be the absolute best, but getting a hold of them is next to difficult, you can buy these, which is effectively the same thing. You do exactly the same thing with them. I mean, they're a little bit bigger, but when it comes to overlocking, that doesn't really matter. Honestly, I ended up getting like three of these things in a pack and, you know, meh. That's before I was able to start. I, I found that if I wait. Another thing I did come, on up, come up with an idea for, and this is gonna be later on, make my own knitting machine. Not one that is going to do me a whole shirt. I mean, for a t-shirt, I would need something like a thousand. So for a jumper, I would need a thousand. This is a small one, uh, you get more, but effectively they sit like this. They go up, grab, down, up, down, grab, up, down, grab. So it's two 45 degree angles and they're just basically shung, 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 shung. That's how the machine works. It's not a mystical trade secret. In fact, if you get the uh, study material, you'll see how this works. But basically one method is like shung, 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 shung. And yeah. So I did go through these recently and I found that some of them are still a bit wonky. While most of them are complete, as in it's all there, some of them are like this one here, missing that bit. So that means this one should technically be a very good uh, hook. Use it in a machine, well, there's barely anything there. So, you know, great candidate for using with an overlocker or you know, mucking around with. I'd probably want to glue something or somehow attach something that can allow me to move it up and down easily, but you, know, you, you never know. Really, they're supposed to close fully once it goes up, but sometimes they don't, and that, that's a bit of a concern. Now, there is another, we have more than one machine at work. This is from another machine. So what was wrong with this one? I think this is the one, one of the ones I fixed. 
Yeah, same sort of process. I mean, you just literally get in there. You've got more space. And I... Ew, there we go. <laughs> I just dug that out of it. Focus. Focus. Whoop. There we go. So I just dug that out of in there. So that stuff can build up. Ooh. That's weird. So crud does build up and it's the same sort of process. Do you really want to turn around, have one of these in a large machine that's constantly going mental and then just completely break down, have to stop, fiddle? No, you want to have it completely running non-stop. And if that means taking them out, here's an example of one where the latch snapped off and oh, it's on one side. Oh, it doesn't matter, put it in, the, no. The needle sort of, this sorry hook moves up and down, up and down. So it has to have both ends working. Now here's a good example of, oh, I cut myself. Not myself, but my glove. This is an excellent example of a bent hook. Why is it having f trouble focusing today? So try to close it. See that is off center. And it's gonna be a problem when the needle goes down the machine because that's gonna catch and it's not gonna have a fun time. Oy. Now these needles were, uh, sorry, these hooks were uh, effectively rubbish. They were just gonna get thrown out and replaced. So me taking them, um, gathering them up, and using them for something, it, it's a form of recycling. Does it matter if I ever actually do make anything? No. I mean, I might give like a few away to some people later on down the track as a, you know, little sort of um, handy thing. But in general, no one's really missing out except for people who collect the rubbish by not collecting like a couple of these things. That's it. I mean, really, I think these might be just, I've seen these rust, or at least smaller ones rust. So this may just be normal steel. At which point you can just melt it down and use it as something else. But uh, last I checked, we don't actually have a fountain. Oh, you'd have to properly set them through metal recycling. Anyway. I don't know what happens to these once they get thrown out. They just get thrown out and they get, and, and they leave the factory. I don't know what happens next. As for anyone missing out, yeah. Look, I even found some other uh, places in that area where one is a fence manufacturer, manufacturer, and what they'll do is they've got a bin of aluminium. I've gone up there and asked, and they're like, "Look, we don't get much for this. So if you want a couple of beams, some offcuts, knock yourself out." Yeah, bad idea because I bought a, I, I got a crap ton of the stuff. Aluminium is easy to work with, which is great. And now I've got way more than what I'll ever probably use, which is great. But if I was melting them down, I, I had the space for it. That'd be a place I'd be going every couple of days, maybe every few weeks just to, you know, pick up some stuff. You know, these were free. I get to muck around with them. Am I going to turn around and sell them and try to make a profit? Eh, no. One, supply is going to be a problem since it requires a hook to malfunction. Two, to buy them in boxes is going to be a few hundred dollars and I just don't have the fun. To go out and buy one thing once, yes. To go out and have to constantly buy something for me, just uh, gloves are occasional and they are getting difficult. I can't buy masks anymore because that's basically gone shit creek. Even just for dust. So I really feel sorry for any, uh, any anyone who has to work with materials that require protection and the protection is no longer available because think, people think that, oh, this is going to protect me from something I think is going to get me. It's like, no, it's not. No, it's like getting uh, orange jumper putting it on and then going into a fire because you think it's going to protect you from fire and then catching a light and burning all over your body because it's 
actually a form of plastic. <laughs> so look, fun little side project for me to work on, for me to plan and like try to do things with. Are these hooks going to be uh, definitely used? I don't know, but it is something fun to occupy small percentage of my time with. And I honestly find them fascinating. And for you at home, if it's an absolute must that you want to try one of these, get a, a hook like this. I think the pack was like $8 shipped from China, or at least from some eBay seller. Uh, I have seen these available locally for a little, somewhat more money, but for like overlocking, uh, it works. It was just a little bigger. I mean, these things like, so you got tube here and while well, this one's flat so it doesn't sort of bulge up but yeah I do use these at work a fair bit and I do, does get I do kind of get pissy if my workstation where I need to use one doesn't have one at which point I go nuts trying to find one when I find it I go back to work although sometimes I don't actually ever need to use it so it's a fun little tool And anyone out there who has these sort of uh, works with them themselves, yeah, do actually comment about how irritating it is when one of these breaks and then whether or not you would dare to try to fix it and then shove it back in there only for it to break again and then to break again and multiple times we're working on one garment. <laughs> I would love to see some of the comments to find out just how irritating it would be for someone trying to make I don't know a, sh a jumper a scarf to happen to constantly replace you know pull one out fix it put it back in pull it out fix it put it back in constantly over a garment because some people I found they just can't comprehend how I want to say exhausting it would be Anyway, I'm going to say yibba dee